Thursday morning. I've been here for five days now. And this is the first actual walk I've come out on. Mostly because the weather's been pretty dreadful. But there have also been other things going on where I haven't been able to go out. So, Mum and Dad are going out this, after, uh, this morning, later this morning, for most of the rest of the day. So I'm coming out now to dust off some cobwebs and do some steps because I am slowly seizing up. While I'm down here, I'm working from a sofa and I can feel my hips getting stiffer and more painful. And that's why I have a standing desk at home because me sitting all day is a terrible thing. And one of the good habits I've built into my life since, well, I discovered the hack in 2020 during COVID. And ever since then, I've used a standing desk, which means that I stand up for most of my day now. Which is much better than sitting down, at least. Good for my back. It's good for my hips and my legs. Although it doesn't really count as exercise. But it's very good for my posture. So I've come out. And then while they are out later, I'm going to do some... Ooh, look at this. Snail on a leaf. Um, yeah. While they're out, I'm going to get on and do some jewellery making. Because it'll be nice and peaceful. Things seem pretty relaxed since I got here. No dramas. <laughs> Thank goodness. Mum's birthday Tuesday. And then yesterday, we went out to lunch. And I ate the most enormous pizza. It's a posh pizza. Not a, not a pizza hut pizza. It's a proper Italian restaurant that mum and dad use fairly regularly. And it was absolutely fantastic. So it's been busy but not busy. And I've been getting on with work. But I've been sleeping really well since I got down here. I've had a dental checkup and everything's good. I have my dental hygienist tomorrow. And then that will put me good till Christmas. We don't like mentioning that word, do we? Um, I'm going to grab the opportunity of clear blue sky, sun, and it's not cold, although it's quite windy. And just get out and drink water and breathe. I don't really have an awful lot more planned while I'm down here. We're just toodling around doing things. We have one day next week when we might be able to go out and do a little trip out as a, as a family, but there's only one day next week when my parents are both free. And of course it's going to be weather dependent. So I'm not sure that's going to happen. We haven't decided even where we would go if we do. I don't 
really have much else to say. It's a very, glad to say, a nice quiet trip down. We have no time for drama. And just staying somewhere without constant traffic noise and drunk people and rowing and double park traffic everywhere and all that sort of thing is fantastic. At night, the silence is, you know when you get silence and it's so quiet, it's almost deafening in your ears. It's like that here. Horse, where's the horse? I want to go walk across the field, but it's very wet. We've had a ton of rain since I got here. It feels like a proper autumn morning, but I am going to. You can see it. I'm going to walk across this field. I don't want to end up with wet trainers though. Trees are just starting to turn now. I'll show you some because autumn trees are pretty. We have very big, big trees here. Something that has been going on here which um, If I get another good day, I'm going to go for a walk and show you the problem. Is our country's current obsession with two things building as many houses as possible anywhere they can get permission, and solar panel farms, which are springing up at a rate of knots. And whilst they might sound like a good solution, I think they will not be. Like electric cars, they are a little bit of greenwashing because we know electric cars are nowhere near as good as regular cars for various reasons, including the inability of us to be able to recycle the batteries at the end and thus, thus cause even more pollution. And in the same way, we have the same problem with wind farms. When the blades break, they've got no way of doing anything with them. So we have these wind farm blade graveyards where these things just get stacked up. Solar farms are going to be the same. Solar panels have a life expectancy and we currently have no infrastructure for adequately and sustainably recycling those back into whatever they need to get turned into. So we are going to have a lot of trouble with what happens to all these thousands and thousands of solar panels once they no longer work in 10, 15 years. And the problem is that instead of utilizing existing space by, for instance, putting solar panels on the roofs of buildings and houses and utilizing it that way, they are planning, these companies are planning to rent or buy or whatever farmers land where farmers are struggling to survive and are giving over their fields either crop or grazing fields to 
solar farm companies to cover them in solar panels and it's not as simple as building the stands for these things putting them on turning them towards the sun and letting them go there is a huge amount of infrastructure required and it looks like they've been given approval to put one here in the village on a great swathe of farmers fields just a short walk from here it's going to cover an enormous amount of land they are theoretically renting it from a farmer but there is no electrical infrastructure so as well as installing these many many solar panels across what are multiple fields nearby here and backing right up onto people's houses they've also got to put in all the cabling the substations and the connecting substations that will attach it to the grid which funnily enough means that all the cabling they've got to run has got to come all the way up the road that runs up here behind these trees all the way along here all the way all the way all the way and then up there is the main crossroads and it's got to run all the way down from there for miles through the lanes of this village to get to where it connects to the mains it's going to be a huge amount of disruption probably quite a lot of damage I don't know whether they're going to be allowed to lay the cables under the tarmac of the road or whether they're going to be digging up the verges and the trees to lay them but also that road over there is a main road so it's not quite so bad although it backs onto a lot of properties here but also um, it also has to run through the lanes and they've got to dig it into the ground where the fields are and there's a lot of woodland there so solar panels which I suppose it's about being independent on energy if that's even going to work but they talk about sustainability and green energy for things which are carving up the countryside and destroying the wildlife and the trees and the ground and then allegedly in 10, 15, 20 years when these things stop working the company will come back and dismantle it all at no cost and take it all away now the fact that they've already put in a electrical structure an electrical system do you think they're actually going to give back those farmers fields change of use and given our obsession with house building I can see them wanting to put something else on that land and it never reverting back to fields the, um, my dad has talked about this my dad used to be an electrical engineer for what started out as the London Electricity Board and had many new guises through the years as it got sold off and re whatevered but he was there worked for them almost, almost his entire working life so he knows a lot about these things and the implications of what's being done so this road here all of this here all of this here and the road that we're now going to walk back along is going to be dug up for these the main cables but hopefully I will have another day like this where I can take you on a walk and show you the land that is going to be disrupted now once you put solar farms on fields you can't use those fields for anything else the light is blocked out they say that life goes on underneath them but they're blocking out most of the light so not much is going to grow you can't grow crops um, I think there is limited usage for grazing at the moment some of those fields are for cattle and horses so they're going to have to go because they will be too big 
although I think you can grow sheep, I'm not sure. But it depends what grows. And this one has been approved, but around this area there are dozens and dozens of proposed solar farms. And of course, lots of building or proposed building for um, for housing and they are literally trying to get their hands on any empty field space they can and because because we live here in a village or I don't live here but my family live here in the village there is a lot of potential green space that these house builders want to take up but equally no infrastructure um, the schools here are full we have one primary school we used to have a middle school which is now a special needs school we don't have the middle range in terms of schools anymore um, the comprehensive that I used to go to doesn't exist anymore that was turned into a housing estate years ago um, so we have very little school facilities, we have no shops, we have a doctor surgery that doesn't function, it doesn't open like a normal surgery, they shut down during Covid and have never willingly gone back to working normal hours, you can't get an appointment. The hospitals in the area don't function normally like most of the NHS doesn't. Um, there's one private dentist and sometimes it takes me six months ahead to book an appointment. Uh, the roads aren't up to it, we're all lanes and small roads here. Although we are reasonably close to uh, the motorways for London and surrounding areas. So there's no infrastructure here and they won't put any in either. Because we've already had new housing estates going in and no infrastructure has gone in to support these new populations at all um, so it's downhill all the way really it's and none of this housing will be affordable I know there's a big new estate going up in Manchester and they said none of the houses are affordable at all it's all a nod towards look we're trying to do this but this won't happen because this is not about helping people this is about greed and making money and feathering nests and supporting people with money. It'll be good for governments, it'll be good for energy companies, it'll be good for energy suppliers in terms of the solar power. It is not going to reduce our energy bills and I doubt it is going to make us independent from energy from other countries or other parts of the world. It's all a fallacy, it's all a big con and the problem is that we, we try to put these things in place but we don't address the main issue. So let's look at this from a money point of view as an individual. If you earn less than you spend, you have two options. You can either cut back on your expenses, look at the things you don't need, look at the frivolous spends that are a waste of money, you can cut back on your expenses, reduce your outgoings below your income and you're laughing. The other thing you can do is to keep spending at a ridiculous level and try and find more money to bring in, which isn't easy especially now. Jobs and better paid jobs are really hard to come by. So let's look at this from a human population problem, which is that we overconsume on everything. We consume at vast levels. We waste huge amounts of everything. Billions of tons of food still gets thrown away in this country every year. We waste huge amounts of energy, huge amounts of water, and instead of reining in a little bit of that wastage we're chasing new infrastructures to try and keep up with 
what in some senses is the ignorance of consumers to just keep on consuming without having to change their habits. And it's the same with housing. You can't now outpace people wanting houses. And you could build three billion homes in this country and there still wouldn't be enough to go round because most of it would be unaffordable. It won't be social housing, obviously, because where's the money in that? And every time you build a new house, there's another new family starting that wants another house. And everyone seems to think that home ownership is a given rather than a luxury. I think house ownership is a luxury, not a standard human right. Uh, I have no aspirations to own a home. I don't want to, to be honest with you. Renting saves me a lot of money and hassle in various ways and gives me the freedom to move if I choose to and not being tied into a mortgage which I would say within the next 10 years I won't need due to discussions I've had with family. Um, So we're doing this all wrong and all we're going to end up with is a country that's been permanently damaged by our attempts to create more energy and build more houses and things won't get better because humans aren't changing. If you don't change, it won't change. We just don't seem to understand that. We want to consume at will, create waste, create damage, get into inordinate amounts of debt for it, and just carry on. And I've now officially reached the point where humans as a species are doomed. I watched uh, a YouTube the other week and it looked at the quality of humans, the increasing ageing of humans generally and the increasing bad health, lack of work, lack of ability to keep up with rising costs and that by the end of the century we will be a declining creature on this planet. And frankly, I think it serves us right. We have used and abused this planet at leisure, ignoring all the warning signs. We are still doing too little too late. And a lot of the scientists say, you can't undo the damage now. You've just got to let us ride it out. And, you know, let's hope that at some point the human population dies out and the planet has a chance because frankly it's such a state now and I think for intents and purposes I have given up on us as a creature on this planet. I think we are doomed and I think we're already seeing the major signs of that and it's just going to get worse and worse. And, you know, thankfully I'm in the second half of my life, so hopefully I won't have to witness a lot of it. And I'll be honest with you, I'm at that point where I've just given up caring now. The best I can do is to look after myself and those around me and my family and friends and what have you, and just just keep going because it's just about survival now and my mum worries constantly about the future for the grandchildren and I don't think they really have one my eldest niece is nine this is uh, next month and I think that their future is going to be really really tough so that's my jolly my jolly words for the day 
Uh, but that's how I feel. And it's been creeping up on me for a while. And I've now reached that resignation point where we're screwed. I think we are screwed. I don't think we learn. We don't understand how much we have to do to reverse some of the problems that we could reverse. We are a wasteful, destructive force on this earth and we are never going to learn. So that's my thought for the day. And I'm saying that on a lovely, sunny, beautiful morning, clear blue sky, which was unexpected. It was supposed to be raining all day today, so I'm pleased about that. And I'm now gonna go home and tinker around. When my parents go out, I'm gonna get on with some jewelry work that I've brought down and I'll add a little bit of that here because that's a nice thing to do. Yeah, I think that wraps up my going out for Thursday. I'll leave you with a view of the sky because it's beautiful here. solar panels. I've had to put that onto a separate post because it's too long so that'll be coming after this one and I think this video is basically the whole of my Kent trip. Um, I'm just recording now because my parents have gone out and so that gives me half an hour, an hour of time to just um, do some indoor camera work rather than always being out. I'm just doing some lunch because it's lunch time. Um, this phone that I'm using, which is my very old Samsung Galaxy J3, which I stopped using getting off of five years ago now, and is a 2016 model. It hasn't been online in ages, I just use it as a camera. But it's definitely starting to struggle. It's struggling to focus in certain lights, or most light now. It's 
struggles to focus with any movement at all and that's whether um, I'm shooting in the car when I've got it pointed out on the road it really struggles with the movement and the light levels and everything and when I'm recording me walking it struggles with the movement of that both directions and I think it's just it's so old now I mean it hasn't had an update since uh, probably 2018 and it's just not really able to function properly I also have a problem with sometimes videos get corrupted and disappear completely sometimes they disappear for a bit and then come back sometimes they're there and then they're not now I don't know whether that's because the extra memory card that I have slotted into this phone which is a 128 gigabytes is too big for this phone model it might not be able to cope with it or whether there's a slightly loose fitting um, I've used this memory card in my other phone and it's been fine so I think there's a, a, a slight issue there and I can't be done with losing footage on a regular basis. It'll go through phases where it's fine for ages and then suddenly it'll just lose everything. My plan is that at some point, reasonably soon, I'm going to have to replace my actual mobile phone because some of the apps are now not working because uh, my phone is getting so old that some of the apps are no longer compatible with my Samsung Galaxy S7. I've had that phone for, again, getting on for five years. It'll be five years in January since I bought that phone to replace this one that I'm using as my camera. And it hasn't had an update probably since 2022 at the latest. It's still a really good phone. The camera's really good. Um, I can put the memory card from this one, the 128 gigabyte, into that one. Uh, the battery doesn't last very well. So the problem I have is that because it's my regular phone, I don't want to use it as my camera phone as well because it drains the battery really fast. I was thinking of getting a, a power pack and trying to use my other mobile phone when I'm out and about on hikes. But it's still a risk because that phone is my actual phone so if i'm out on a hike and something happens and my battery's down and i need to make an emergency call or i've got lost and i need to use my maps i have no way of contacting anybody or knowing what i'm doing so it's a bit of a risk so the idea is that i'm going to buy a new mobile phone to replace my s7 then this one will become redundant and my S7 will become my camera phone and because I've wiped I will have wiped it of all the other information all it will need to do is run as a camera so that battery is then going to last much better whereas like this one now although it's really old it is just a camera and therefore the battery will last me for three or four hours of recording time which is pretty good I think and that's more than enough that I need in a hike because most of it ends up on the cutting room floor anyway so I've got to think about replacing that. I have another major project which I have discussed briefly twice and we'll go into in more detail. That's going to cost money. Um, I think it's going to cost less than replacing my mobile phone. I'm either going to get a, a Galaxy S10 or S20. I'm keeping an eye on the prices. The prices seem really high for phones that are already a few years out of date. So I'm just going to keep an eye on things and see if they drop. I'm not going to buy it before the beginning of next year and I'm just going to have to muddle along for now but um, yeah this the quality of this camera is not great and it's it doesn't look quite so great on my on my YouTube now because you know particularly I'm recording long hikes and the footage clarity isn't very good or it struggles to focus it's starting to look a bit ropey now so I need to I need to work out what I'm going to do about that. I don't like to invest too much in this channel. Um, it doesn't make enough money for me to justify spending lots of money on a GoPro. Um, 
yeah, it, it doesn't warrant me investing in proper camera equipment because it doesn't make me enough money. And the money that it does make me is going into paying bills. It's not extra spendies. So I don't want to spend the money on it, but if I have to buy a new mobile phone anyway because um, it's old and it's no longer compatible with a lot of the software and the apps and things that I need, like my mobile online banking and things like that, then it's going to have to go anyway. And then I always turn the old phone into the new camera phone. So money considerations for the end of this year. It's going to be an expensive rest of the year, I think, for this other project, which is going to cost money, and then replacing my mobile phone. Um, I have money put aside for things like that. I don't just exist on a hand-to-mouth existence. But it's still a pain, because I'd rather keep the money in the bank, to be honest with you. I don't have a huge amount going on for the rest of the trip while I'm down. It is now Tuesday of the second week and I'm going home on Saturday morning. So I'm kind of, I've been doing some work stuff, so I'll plonk up a bit. I think I've already done it anyway, you know about that. I've been doing a bit of jewellery work, staying productive. This is not a holiday for me when I come down. I'm still doing loads of admin, money stuff, recording videos, editing videos all sorts of bits and pieces but it's just a different environment really isn't it uh so what's going to happen i've got to do uh i've got to go to sainsbury's and put up with petrol for the return journey home i need to go to waitrose because i've got a five pounds voucher from shopping with my john lewis credit card and we have no waitrose around where i live so when i come down if i have one i use it i didn't use it last time i was down but I can buy a couple of bits that I can take back and use um, when I get back, like bag of potatoes, things like that. It's only a fiver. I'm not going to get very much for a fiver in Waitrose, am I? So I've got that to do. And then on Friday, I'm meeting my old school friend, who I always meet when I come down. And we've decided that if the weather holds, we are going to go down to the coast, have fish and chips and a pint and walk a friend's dog. So that'll be nice. Hopefully the weather will hold up and we'll be able to do that because we've been planning that all year and all the Fridays when I've been down and we've been meeting up, the weather's just been atrocious. So we're hoping that's going to work out. So that'll be a nice end to my trip down. And then I'll be heading home and just doing stuff at home. And you can see this camera, can you see the light changing? It's really struggling now. I mean, my other phone will be able to cope with this, but hey-ho. Right, so that's that little update. I'm padding out my... <laughs> my vlog because it's so hard to find chunks of time to record in it's you have to go out and walk if you want to record anything because there's people here all the time um yeah but that's a that's a fair update and then i shall probably do a bit of video while i'm driving down to sainsbury's and waitrose and then i probably won't record anything for friday but i'll do some photos and a little bit of footage um, with other people and I never put other people into my videos so um, but I'll do some glimpses and then we'll do a, a beginning of the drive home kind of we're off again kind of video and then that will be enough for this one and then back to normal life yeesh anyway getting on with stuff speak to you later bye it's Wednesday I'm out for a walk, even though it's raining on and off all day today. I've got the brolly because I'm going out of my mind, just sat indoors, been slowly grazing my way through work and admin, but it's not an honest day's work. But it's uh, look. No coat on, and it's the 2nd of October today. I had to look at my step count this morning since I've been here. It's absolutely shocking. So I wonder I'm going a little bit mad. And it's not that my back hurts and my hips hurt. Because I've pretty much been stuck on the sofa the whole time.
No room for a standing desk. The only table that's at proper standing height really is the kitchen table. And it's not very convenient to do that. So, I've just been sat on the sofa. But <laughs> it's so bad for my hips. So I'm out walking today, this afternoon, it's about two o'clock. A break in the rain and it's lovely and sunny, but it's not going to last. There are lots of trees to shelter under and I have brolly. But I'm not planning to be out for a long, long time. I just need to get my head back in check. It gets a bit stifling and I've, I've reached that midway point where I'm starting to get irritated by people. I'm fed, it, fed up with having the same conversations over and over again because my dad forgets that he's told me things. He's not got Alzheimer's, he's just getting old. And I think he just wants the attention. He's telling me the same things and then so yes, I know I told you, but I'm telling you again. So I don't need to know again. My memory's quite good. You tell me something once and I probably won't forget it. So it gets annoying. And then I'll say to him, that you've already told me this. And then he'll get annoyed at me because I've told him that. So it kind of goes around in circles. Most of the time I've been down, it's not been a problem. I've just been pretty chilled about everything. I've not had to wear earplugs at night. Everyone's been remarkably quiet in the evening. Never used to be the case, but um, I've had a pretty chilled visit actually. I've slept really, really well since I've been here, which again isn't always the case. Sometimes I sleep really well and sometimes I don't. It just depends on the mood. But it's so quiet down here, it's lovely. Deal with all the things I have to deal with back at home. Oh, look, someone's got banana trees. Look at that. I didn't bring my stick out today. It's just me and the phone. I wasn't really going to say anything, but I have stuff to record tomorrow because I'm going to go to Waitrose and Sainsbury's. We'll have a little chat in the car and then Friday I'm off to the, the coast for fish and chips with my mate and her husband when he gets back from work. So that will be something different. I probably won't record anything but I'll take some photos and whatever so you can see it. suffice for this two weeks it's gone first week went really slowly but the second week's gone really fast oh, before you know it gonna be back home back into the usual routine I have a feeling October's gonna be quite a warm one this year I don't know if it will but it certainly is so far. Today is really warm. Anyway, that's all I've got to say today, really. It's probably enough, isn't it? Look at that lovely blue sky. But most of that feels better to be out. Right. Catch you on the next one.
this morning it is Thursday and I'm doing my little drive out. I'm going to Sainsbury's for petrol and Waitrose. I have this five pound voucher to spend, which I can't spend at home because there isn't a Waitrose anywhere near me, but there's one relatively close here. So my little challenge today is what can I get for a fiver in Waitrose? I don't suppose it's an awful lot, but anything that I use the voucher for is free basically. And it's proper autumn morning. Proper autumn. But it's okay. I was reading an article yesterday. It was to do the minimum to do with the minimum income allowance or they were talking about um, you know like living wage and stuff like that and how much people need to have what they call a happy life. But it's quite a broad spectrum because it doesn't take into account individual lives. So it doesn't look at how people spend, where they live, how they live. But the broad estimation was that for a single person, you needed to have or needed to have an income of 28,000 a year to be happy or to be living your bestish life. It seemed an enormous amount of money to me. And maybe other people would think that was correct, but it depends on your lifestyle. I mean, this year I've done pretty well. My income at the moment looks like it's gonna come in at about 16 and a half thousand, which is more than I have brought in in, I don't even know how many years. It's been a while, that's for sure. And if I had more money, I mean, I would probably stash it in savings and use the interest as income. But if I had more money, I would probably travel a bit more. I might do a few more car camps. Uh, but there are lots of things that I wouldn't change because a lot of the things that I do are based around how I feel about consumption. It's based around how I feel about waste, about trying to minimize my impact on the planet, which is entirely very minimal in terms of what I can do to make a difference. So I shop yellow stickers in the supermarket. I wouldn't change doing that. I keep my energy usage down. I might turn the heating on more in winter. I'm not sure. I do put it on when it gets to the point where I've had enough, but I don't, you know, it's October now and I wouldn't consider putting my heating on in October. So I wouldn't change an awful lot, but one of the problems with doing YouTube videos and doing them the way I do it is that people will have a video come up in their feed. They won't be following me, but this video will appear and they'll watch it and they'll message me and say, you can't live like this. You have to move back with your parents. What are you doing? But they haven't watched any other videos or enough other videos to understand that I'm fine. I don't feel like I'm deprived. A lot of what I have done is by choice. The income that I have is by choice because I am self-employed because it just works better for me. I don't do well in office environments anymore. I don't do well in like commuting and things like that. And because I have been quite autonomous for quite a while now, I 
have got used to the way things are. And if I want to work for myself and do it my way and earn less, I would rather curb my outgoings than have to chase income. So some people don't want to change their lifestyle. They would rather try for the higher job and get more money in. I would rather adjust my lifestyle to reduce my outgoings and stick to the income. And it's entirely autonomous in many ways, not entirely because you're never autonomous if you're reliant on the system. But I feel like I've got a balance now where, yeah, I don't have tons and tons of money, but I've managed to save money this year because I'm earning more than I spent. So my 16 and a half thousand, if that stays on course for the last three months, but my outgoings are, I think it's 13,000, about 13,700 at the moment. And it'll probably come in around 14,000 at the end of the year, which is higher than last year, for sure. But that's because I have made conscious decisions to make certain purchases this year, which benefit me. But because I'm careful with my money, I have the money to do that. And one of the other things that I was reading about yesterday was something called financial wellness, which sounds like a bit of a gimmick word, but when you look into what it is, it's, a lot of, it's got a lot to do with what I do, and I think I might do a separate post on this. And it's about being completely aware of your financial situation being able to track your finances so there are no, never any shocks coming. You know what you've got, you know what's coming, and it means that you are fully aware of your situation, whether that's good or bad, which allows you to make certain decisions. So I might do a post on that because I've been doing financial wellness without calling it that for a very long time and it takes all the anxiety out of money because there are no shocks and surprises because I know what's coming in I know what's going out I know when it's going out I know roughly how much it's going to be and I know whether or not I've been able to cover it so I will do a separate post on that because for anyone that wants to get into the basics of having better control over not, maybe not even your spending and your earning, but your awareness of it. And I think that's really important. It's the awareness, it's the understanding, it's the, well, I know I have to spend, I know I have to spend this much this month and I don't quite have enough, but I could not buy X, Y, Z. And that solves the problem, that sort of thing. So I will probably do a post on that later in the month because I think that might be an interesting thing and that's part of the way I live my life and that's really what this channel is about. So I am now at Waitrose. I'm going to go in and let's see what I can get for a fiver. <laughs> right, so I've just come out of Waitrose. Wasn't much of a challenge really. So the first thing I wanted really was a bag of potatoes. I don't have any potatoes in. I don't keep that, that, those in the freezer. Everything else is fine. So I had to look at their potatoes and the prices were all over the place. So you can get a Waitrose 2K bag of Maris Pipers for 185 and they were discounted at £1.75. And then next to that they had the Waitrose Essentials, which were 2.5 kilograms. And then above them was their version of uh, Wonky, you know, like everywhere does like their wonky vegetables now and their wonky one was a three kilogram bag for one pound sixty so I got that the other thing I got was um, there was a punnet of plum tomatoes which there's six in there so that's like your average punnet of tomatoes they were discounted to 55p and uh, their original price was £1.70. And these are just Waitrose Essential. These aren't posh variety, although 
I think lots of us probably think Waitrose is posh anyway. But their discounted prices on stuff was ridiculous. You know, their discounted broccoli was something like one pound thirty nine, and uh, <laughs> you just look at the prices and think maybe not. And then my mum texts me to say, "Can you get Dad a Telegraph?" Because he reads the Telegraph, and the Telegraph newspaper, a standard weekday telegraph is three pounds fifty so that got me to five pounds sixty five and i thought well i've got a five pound voucher i might as well just get what i've got and then my dad can give me back three pound fifty for the newspaper so i'm actually quids in so i've done that uh yeah <laughs> always makes me laugh going into waitrose because their idea of cheap prices just always makes me die anyway so now I'm going to drive off to Sainsbury's I'm going to get my petrol I'm going to fill up on petrol for my return journey in a couple of days and that'll be the end of that little trip so um yeah off I go again So here we are again, another two weeks is over and I'm heading home. Gotta get myself all set up here. Uh, I had a good day yesterday, went out with my friend and her husband. We went to a beach called Little Stone, which is near Dungeness. It's a really amazing beach. We've done some really nice beaches this year, I have to say. And afterwards we went to get fish and chips, which was great. And then when we had our fish and chips, we drove round the beaches a bit until we came to where the old lighthouse is at Dungeness, near Dungeness Power Station. And they said, we're going to go and watch the foxes. And I was like, foxes? And we got there and there were eight foxes. I don't know whether it was two families or an extended family. We worked out which was the adult and then there seemed to be a lot of foxes which were possibly this year's youngsters but maybe last year's as well. There seemed to be an awful lot of them and they come in because people come in with their fish and chips and their picnics and sit at the picnic tables and eat and they come in for the free food. So um, lots of pictures of foxes, did some video. They will literally come right up to the door and wait for you to feed them. Unbelievable. So, <laughs> so that was a great end to the week and then didn't get back home until about eight o'clock last night um, and then I just finished packing because I done most of the packing yesterday and that was it so now I'm just uh, sorting out my maps for my journey it's uh, what is the time it's quarter past nine and you get a reasonably early start it's a good early start for me anyway it's a Saturday, so we'll see how the the journey is. It looks okay at the moment, I think. And I have a, a long Spotify playlist ready to go. So that's it. I'm off. Heading home. And uh, see you on the other side.
and um, the pebbles that we've got in our back garden. <laughs> you nicked them from the beach? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs>